Then why not? If you're Alex Corrin, that's the most important thing. And I yeah. know Tim and I feel the same way about this. Like, show me. Show if, me. If, if that's the most important thing to you, you can wait. Yep. He didn't have to sign it now. No. That's the really, that's the part of it that floors me, that he did it now in July, and he didn't go get the most money, which we'll get more into that, but why now? If it's about those things, then he wouldn't have done it now. He would have waited. Yeah. Which tells me it's about all that other stuff he's talked about, which is his family likes it here, and he's yeah. comfortable, and he, he likes being in Boston. He, I'm glad he likes being he, here. He's, he's found this to be, you know, he talked about being from Puerto Rico, but in terms of, like, his home in baseball, it's pretty much become Boston for him. He spent a lot of years here, right? Yeah. This is the place that he's comfortable in. He likes living here. His family is comfortable here. They're settled in, and, hey, $7 million a year is not a... a Small number no, for a manager in baseball. It's still a really way. good number, but he could have had more. Yeah, he he could have had more years. He could have had more money per year. He took a team-friendly deal. And when you're taking team-friendly deals before any of those other things get proven, how can you say it's about that stuff? Oh, oh they've convinced them. They've convinced them they're going to be all in at the deadline. So why couldn't he just wait two weeks and sign the deal in two weeks and see if they actually come through on that promise? This might be your big signing. Right, they got to take the deal off the table in August? Right. Oh, it's there in the middle of July. But, hey, once we get to August, deal's, <laughs> deal's not on the table anymore, I think the Alex. longer he waited, the more like, bargaining power he had. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. And he had all the leverage, leverage here. Leverage. He had all the leverage, and he, he gave it all up, which is great for the team and great if you like Alex Cora and you're a Red Sox fan. These are all good things. It's, it's a good one, thing for the team. It's one of the things I like about the team. Like, he's... He's your he, he's Belichick like he's your he's your star right now. I know Devers is is your star, but it really doesn't feel that way. It feels like Core's the guy. Core's everything. Every what you talk about every day. You know, it's the most known name. It really is. It worries me a little bit that Core is signing the deal for those reasons. <laughs> that I think I think his reasons are that he's comfortable and he likes Boston and his yeah. family likes Boston. He doesn't want to uproot his family, which is totally understandable. And he got a good per year deal. So he can he can go to bed at night knowing that he's being paid appropriately, if not the most he could have made. But he's not he's not being right. lowballed here. But what happens in a year and a half if the team hasn't invested as much as he thought they would or they should, and they're still doing the same thing that they've been doing? What happens then to how he feels about still being here? Good question. And are we going to get the, are we going to get the same Alex Cora at the deadline in let's say 2025? or 2026 that we got in 2021, 2020, or I should say 22 and 23, when he was pissed, as he should have been. We were yeah. all pissed. But when he felt like they weren't doing what they should be doing, or in the off season when they don't go for it and they've got money to spend, what happens then? Good question. And we'll see. Silence. Uh, money can silence people. It can. And... He, it's going to be above him. It's not his decision to do that. Then, it, then it's going to be all on um, the way the front office acts, and you know whether it's Breslow and whether he'll still be here. Who the hell knows? I mean, we thought Heim Bloom was going to be here longer than he was. He wasn't. So now it's Breslow, and then he'll go on to the next one. But at least it gives Cora some stability, and he's been elsewhere. He knows what it's like. It's not always, it's not always grass isn't always greener on the other side. True, but if he That's, went, if he went somewhere else this off season, if he yeah. went to the Dodgers or he went to the Yankees, Yankees. or any other team that yeah. wanted to drop forty million dollars on him or more, wouldn't they have received a re-energized, refocused Alex Cora? Even more, he's had a great year. Yeah, right, yeah. the guy's been nails. But wouldn't they get someone that was like just really on top of his game, walking through the door? Sure. Here, it's just like, I just keep doing what I've been doing. Yeah. So, But it's also maybe you feel like you're building something. Oh. Maybe. Maybe you know? maybe just loves maybe the young talent, here. which he should. They've got good young he talent. He wants here as a manager. He wants to, probably wants to win again. He wants to get back to that. So he's got that taste. Yeah, yeah. He knows what it feels like when you win here. You would think it's only going to get better from here for the Red Sox based on the young talent yes. coming up. But when you heard Cora speak yesterday, to your point, Bertrand, it wasn't anything about the baseball operation or the front office itself that he believes in and wants to be here. It was more of the family stuff is the reasoning for it, which I do think is interesting because, you know, Breslow comes out, makes those comments that they're going to buy at the deadline and all that stuff yesterday. That's great. They're on the same page. These guys were not on the same page two weeks ago. 
So how is that working relationship long term with those two guys moving forward as well? To your point, if they're not on the same page, is this actually a functional operation moving forward? Well, isn't it funny how there may have been some disagreement or they may not have been on the same page? I'm not saying they dislike each other or anything yeah. like that, but they were just like not this unified duo. No. And now all of a sudden, he's got a new contract. It's like, oh, Alex Cora, yeah, I mean, you started to hear this already. Like, Alex Cora and Breslow, they're on the same page. I don't just, believe that. I'm like, what? Are they? I mean, they might be. They might. Th there may not be an issue there, but it's like, don't sell me on that yeah. now that he's re-upped for three years. Right. Please don't do that. How do you think he felt when he had a positional player throw at 50 miles an hour the other day? <laughs> like, like, we need more pitches. Like, he right. probably sitting there like, I, I, I'm, I'm throwing out guys and eat it. Go ahead and eat it because uh, you don't give me pitching, this is what you're going to get. Like, I don't think they're on the same page. Well, I don't know that they're not. I, mean, I just don't know page. that they're like this great tandem. Yeah, they're, right. Dynamic right. Duo. No. they're in locks. They're yes. not locks. Yes. Are they? <laughs> right. I mean, nobody believes that. I'm not that. buying that. Nobody, nobody believes, believes that. that. No, nobody that covers the team believes that. <laughs> nobody that knows core believes that. I don't think anybody knows Preston. What a unit. <laughs> <laughs> These well, two guys. out with a robot. What? Brady and Belichick. Yeah, yeah right. Those yeah. two. In their prime. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Peak 07 yeah. Brady yes, Belichick. Yeah, yeah. Just best of the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's about his family. And, hey, I respect the hell out of that. Like, that guy left millions of dollars on the table because he, I think he did what he thought was best for wife, kids, extended family, whatever it might be. Uh, I will never uh, put someone down for that. Like, good for you, but that 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 takes swallowing, uh, you know, a tough pill, right? For sure. I mean, to, hear, to do that, you hear that all the time in sports, and you kind of roll your eyes. But listening to Corey yesterday, and again, not going out on a limb and saying like, "Oh, the red this operation at the Red Sox," I believe in, I believe in the direction, all that stuff. It was more the family stuff. I, I really believe that's what pushed him over the top to sign the deal, hundred percent. And he left. I mean. Think about what he may have left on the table. Oh. He signs for $21 million. Council had $40 million in his contract. Let, let's assume Cora another year you know, forward and being what he is, a guy who's got a World Series ring and a lot of success as a manager. He left $20-plus million on the table to sign this deal yesterday with the Red Sox. So <laughs> it's no small sum. No. And that's not a guy who made a boatload as a player. No. I mean, he made, made good money, but he was, you know, let's be honest, a utility player, right? Yeah. Journeyman. So he's back. That's great for the Red Sox. But don't tell me it's about his belief in their team. He would have waited two weeks to sign the deal. He would have waited until the offseason to sign the deal. He would have done any of those things. He wouldn't have signed it in the middle of July. Uh, but it's a win for Craig Breslow. I give him that. Craig Breslow gets a W and gets Alex Cora back. Craig Breslow also allegedly has selected a path. I, I've seen the headlines. You know, Breslow has determined what they're going to do at the deadline. I think you're reading a little too much into that quote. I think you should more carefully examine the quote by Craig Breslow because I don't think he has. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Zolak and Bertrand here. For more Red Sox analysis and opinion, Hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 985thesportshub.com.